Hi, I'm Greg from Motorsports Innovations, and today I'm going to show you how to download a run created onto an SD card from a Race Pack Sportsman or V300 SD. First thing I'm going to do is stick the SD card into my laptop. When Windows discovers that SD card, it pops up this window, and regardless of what version you're on, it looks very similar. And we're not going to need it for this video. So I'll close that out. I will double click on to data link to load that up. Okay, now that I have data link loaded, I am going to do the new download. And you start by clicking on either the new download icon at the top of the toolbar, or you can go to the file menu and click on the new download here. I'm going to use the icon. Immediately it opens up my SD card and shows me all my runs. And I'm going to pick 89 because I know some of the other runs are bad runs or lifts or aborts or I think one of them is a red light but I know that 89 is a good run so I'm going to say open this screen where you put in the dates and the time and the track is very important that all of this stuff is accurate so it was 2013 it was ATCO the date was the 14th when the run was actually made so you want to change that not when the time and date of right now when you're doing the download but when the run was made and the time was 18.24 I got that off the time slip earlier and that was qualification 2 so I'm going to put all that information in again very important to have all that stuff accurate in order to be able to look up the run later click on next this is an opportunity to put in all your time slip incrementals. And I'm just going to put one in, my ET. And uh, the next screen is an opportunity to put in all your weather information. So this can be a pretty cool logbook. And I just use one field on here as well. So the DA was 850 feet. Then I click on OK. The next step. Race Pack presents is the file save and it's going to save the run that it just downloaded with this name that's highlighted and it builds a name based on all the information it has available so the first two things are V3 for V300 ATC which is short for ATCO and then the date and the Q2 which we checked off on those boxes earlier so I'm going to click on save and I did download this run once before in preparing the video so you won't normally see this I'm going to say yes to this and the run comes up my particular system the graph area is smaller and we're going to make it bigger and some systems it's going to download big and we have two ways to do it we can use the conventional windows way of dragging down the graph area or we can use this organized panes which will make the graph area full size. My run is compressed because I record for a long time, 200 seconds, and I also record the burnout. So we're going to zoom in and center up the run. Notice me using the right arrow to get over in time and the zoom key, of course, to expand it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here where the engine RPM goes off of the two-step. You see where it's flat there, that's on the two-step. And begins to accelerate up when the two-step releases, transbrake releases rather. Uh, that's the beginning of the run. And I'm going to set that as the start point by clicking on the green T, saying OK. My run compresses again. So I'll zoom to expand it. And now you'll see that zero is right here at the beginning of my run, which gives me good time increments. For instance, if I want to know the shift, I shift 1.38 seconds into the run. So if I want to backtrack and say my 60 foot was 1.01, we can use the arrow keys to maneuver until this time. Whoops, 
How about if I go the right way? 1.02 is the closest I can get. So that's that's where I am at the 60 foot as far as engine RPM is 6330 and I can read all my other sensors at that point in time as well. So a couple things I always check. Um, I check my shift RPM so I click at the peak right there to say okay here's where it shifted 6883 that's what I was expecting what was my track RPM so I click right there at the peak and my trap RPM was 7600 so that was correct and I could also look at a lot of different sensors at this point in time I will look at one and that is my oil pressure and just to check to make sure that is okay and oil pressure is okay I'm going to turn that off the last thing I'm going to look at is my converter slippage and converter slippage shows up at the end of the run so we click there again, get to the very end. I can use my, my arrow keys to get to that exact spot, the peak RPM. And put my slider over here. And I'm going to read my engine to drive shaft ratio, which right here is 1.08. So meaning that one turn of the drive shaft equals 1.08 turns of the engine equates to 8% converter slip. That's a good number. Typically you see 5 to 8% is good for, for most cars. Now this is a quarter mile car and uh, sometimes people will say, well what, what would this be in the eighth mile? So we could click on our time scale at this car runs about a 430 something. I'll, I'll put it right there. And move it over, get it to 440. There we go. Whoops, I'm getting a little too itchy with the keys. It helps if I push the right key. Okay, so 440. My converter slippage is 22%. So that's typical of what you would see. So uh, that's the so quick and easy, just checking a few things, how to download to run. The emphasis is on getting those dates and times right because that's how it's stored in your laptop. And I'll show in a further video how to look at an old run. So if you have any questions or comments, give me a call or an email. Greg Kelly, 609-265-2110. Thanks.